Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the ATI T Study Manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll talk about a concept that appears at the very bottom, at the very bottom of page number 87, I believe, page 87. Or oh, right here it says this here, at the bottom of page 87, a concept of bimodal distribution. What does it mean when we say a we have a distribution that happens to be bimodal? Let's take a look at it, shall we? Let's, let's first have the data set. Let's first have the data set. So again, here are the observations. And when you say observations, we're talking about the values. And here is, here is the frequency. How often does it appear? So again, think of this in terms of exam, if you like. An exam was given where the highest score that you could have gotten was 10 on the quiz. The highest that anybody could have gotten was 10. And we're going to find out how many people scored different, uh, how many people scored a given value. So you can have uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, and 10 if you like. So these are the values. This is exam was given where this possible scores that you could have had was all the way from 0 to 10, 10 being the perfect score, 0 being that you did a splendid job flunking it. Beautiful job. So how many people had a score of zero? Answer is one person had a score of one person, one person had a score of zero. These are the frequency. One person had a score of zero. How many people scored one? Two people scored one. How many people scored two? Three people scored two. How many people had a score of three? Two people had a score of two people had a score of three. Uh, how many people had a score of four? four? Answer is one. One person scored five. Two people scored six. Three people scored seven. Two people had a score of eight. One person had a score of one. And nobody, we have nobody here of a score of ten. Nobody had a score of ten. That's our frequency distribution. What's the mode here? What's, what is the mode of these observations? Mode, as we already know, means which value, which observation appears most frequently. But that's a tricky question here. It's a tricky question because a score of 2 appears 3 times. 3 people had a score of 2. But a score of 7 also appears 3 times. 3 people had a score of 7. 3 people had a score of 2. This is what is known as a bimodal distribution. It has two modes. It has two modes. Namely 2 and 7. 2 and 7. That was the easy part. What we want to do next, what we want to do next is to plot this thing on a frequency distribution chart. Let's plot it. Let's plot. Let's plot the frequency distribution. Frequency distribution, it goes all the way from 0 to 9. That's exactly what we're going to do here. So here is our 0. Let's say this is 3, this is 6, and this is 9. That's 9, that's 6, that's 3. And highest frequency that we see is 3 here. Highest frequency we see is 3. So here we go. 1, 2, and 3. Let's begin, shall we? One person had a score of 0. So that, that, that's right here. Two people had a score of 1. Two people had a score of 1. Remember this. On the, on the y-axis, we have frequency. And if you have not watched yesterday's video, or day before yesterday, day 138 or 137, I don't remember where, but we talked about the normal distribution. Watch the video. Make sure you watch this video in, it, in, in the proper sequence because the concepts build on each other. In the frequency distribution, what we put in the y-axis are the frequency and what we put in the x-axis is the value, the observations. We don't, we're not dealing with two different variables. There is no independent variable and there is no dependent variable in this, in this, in this context. There is only one variable, which is the score. The question is, how often does a given score appear? That's what this is. On the y-axis, we have the frequency, 
1, 2, 3, 3 is the highest frequency, and these are the values, these are the scores. Or values. Or if you like, the observations. Whatever you want to call it. Observations, values, scores. Typically you wouldn't say scores because it's not always the scores, it could be anything. It could be the income, it could be height, it could be weight, it could be anything. So we talk about the values or the observations. Here it is a score. So one person, one person had a, a oh sorry. Oh that's, that's, that's not right. That's not right. What does this point say? Let's see if you can figure out. This is the value of zero. It says, and how many times does it appear? How many times does it appear the way I plotted it here? It says zero people had a score of zero. No, no, no. This is wrong. This is wrong. It says zero people had a score of zero. I was careless. One person had a score of zero. This is one, two, and three. These are the frequencies I keep repeating. Let's pick up speed, okay? The score of one appears twice. The score of one appears twice. So if this is three, this is two, and this is one. The score of one appears twice. The score of 2 appears 3 times. The score of 3 appears twice. It appears twice. This is the frequency. This is the value. The score of 4 appears 1. Score of 4. So this is 3, this is 6, this is 4 and a 5. 4 and a 5. The score of 4 appears 1. The score of 5 also appears 1. The score of 6 appears twice. Appears twice. The score of 7 appears 3 times. This is the frequency. Appears 3 times. 1, 2, 3. 3 times the score of 7. This is 6. This is 9. 7, 8. 7 appears 3 times. 8 appears twice. and 9 appears once. As I told you in the previous video, typically we do not sit there and try to figure out the uh, plot of frequency distribution with so few observations, 6 or 7 or 10 observations. That is usually not the case. Usually in real life we have hundreds of observations and for each value we ask ourselves how, how often did this value appear, how often did that value appear, how often did that value appear and there are hundreds of observations so it, it, it tends to take a very nice shape to it. It has a nice curve to it and it takes a very nice shape. It's not going to be abrupt, but here there are only a few observations, but we're going to join them. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. It's going to be a little abrupt, but that's okay. There we go. Voila. I'm going to make it darker now so you can see it. There's your first peak. That's your first peak, that's your, that's your, that's your mode, that, that only appears most often. And then here is the second, second peak. It has two peaks. Since, since frequency distribution, if you plot the frequency distribution and you happen to see two peaks, peaks being at the same height there, because height is how often it appears, on the, on the y-axis we are measuring frequency. So if the peaks happen to be at the same height, that means these two values appear equal number of time, it appears equal number of time, we do not have a mode here, we have modes. This, this distribution that you see is bimodal, right here. It is bimodal. So we cannot talk about what is the mode here. The question here is, question here is, what are the modes? And the answer is, the modes are 3 and 7. What about the mean? Before we talk about the mean, let's talk about the median. Okay, watch what happens. Let's talk about the median. Okay, pay attention here. What's the median? Median is the middle number after the numbers have been arranged in order, which they have been. These are the frequencies. But if you were to put here, let me let me do it on the top so we can actually see it. In the data set, see this is a, this is known as frequency distribution. It is given in the form of frequency distribution. Usually, that is not the case. The data set will typically look like this. We, we have a zero that appears one, then we have one that appears twice, one and a one, two that appears three times, two, 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 three that appears twice, four that appears once, five appears once, six appears twice, seven.
7 appears 3 times, 8 appears 2 times, and 9 appears 1. This is how the data set is going to look like. But of course, when it's given in the raw form, they are not arranged in order. You have to arrange them in order. You have to arrange them in order, and then ask yourself, what is the magic value where half the values fall below it and half the values, values fall above it? But in order to find that, we have to know how many observations we have. How many observations do we have? Let's count them, shall we? 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 3, 3 plus 3, 6, 8, 9, 12, 15, and looks like 18. Other way, other way we could have established how many observations we have is through this frequency charge. Just count them. There is 1, so that's 3 so far, that's 3, 6, 1, 2, 3, that's another 3. 3 plus 3 plus 3, that's 9. 1, 2, 3, that's 3 more observations, 3 more observations, 3 more observations. There are 18 observations. Since we have even number of observations, since we have even number of observations, the median is, go is going to be the average, let's put it here. Since we have, since we have, Since there are, there are 18 observations, the median is going to be the average of, that's the average, A-V-E, that's the abbreviation for average, A-V-E, that's the abbreviation for average. Median is going to be the average of the ninth and the tenth observation. Why the ninth and the tenth observation? Well, let's find out, shall we? Because you see, three observations here, three observations here, that's six, plus two is eight, so that, that's up to here is eight. Three observations here, three observations here, that's six, two observations here, that's the eight, right here. So what's the ninth observation? Well, the ninth observation here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's four. Ninth observation is four. And the tenth observation is five. These two are sitting in the middle. Nine observations are, or rather, eight observations are to the left of five, and eight observations are to the right of four. I meant to say the left of four and the right of five. You understand? So the median here is going to be the average of these two numbers. The average of these two numbers. Four plus five divided by two. The median is going to be the average of the ninth and the tenth. The average of the median of the, of the ninth and the tenth observation is four and a half, right here. Four and a half. And you can clearly see, as you can clearly see, that's the magic value, four and a half. Voila! You see how symmetric it is? Half the observations, as you can clearly see, half the observations lie below four and a half, half the observations lie above four and a half. Median is four and a half. Because this is not a normal distribution, this is my bimodal distribution. Yesterday we learned, yesterday we learned that in the case of normal distribution, the mean, the median, and the mode they are all equal to each other. But because this is not a normal distribution, it has two peaks, is bimodal. So there are two modes. And secondly, you can see, even though it is a symmetric distribution, it's very symmetric, it's symmetric around four and a half. It is symmetric. But the mean does not equal the mode or the median. Oh, sorry, the mean here does equal, mean is going to be four and a half. If you do the work, you will find that mean is four and a half because it's symmetric. Whatever, four and a half is half above four and is half above five, then you get each other. Four and a half is three and a half, four and a half is one and a half above three and it's one and a half above below 6. So these observations are going to negate this observation, they're going to all become 4.5. So here, median is median is, is the value, is the, is the average of the ninth and the tenth, which is 4.5, which is same as mean. Mean here does equal, mean equals the median, but it does not equal mode. It obviously, it's not going to equal mode, because it doesn't have a unique value of mode, it's bimodal. This is what you see, and this, by the way, has a name, even though you may not need it for the exam, but this line actually has a name. This is called 
this line that we have here is called the line of symmetry. Line of symmetry. Line of symmetry because everything is symmetric around this line. Line of symmetry. Let me quickly go over my notes, make sure I didn't leave out anything. And that was it. And that is what you see, that is what you see at the very bottom of page 87. Except they do not give you any values. They just give you da, 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 da. They don't give you the axis. You have no idea what the hell they're measuring on y-axis. You have no idea what, what is being put on the x-axis. It's horrible. It's, it's, just, it's just a picture. It's just a picture. But that's not how you plot a uh, frequency distribution. Frequency distribution, one more time, is so called because it tells you the frequency of given observation, give frequency of given value. How often does it appear? And we put that on the y-axis, and the values are put on the x-axis, and we start plotting how often does the given value appear. And when it's bimodal, when it's bimodal, you will immediately see, when you plot the frequency distribution, you will immediately see two peaks, which is what you see at the bottom of that page. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.